There are key times and reasons when you want and need to raise your rates. In this two-part episode series, this is the first, I'm going to talk in this episode about when to raise your rates. And I'll give you three reasons and discuss each one with examples of what happens when I or other trainers that I coach have done it. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how much, (laughs) how often, and how to tell them. That's going to happen actually in the follow-up. So excuse me. So in this episode, we talk about when. In the follow-up episode, and we're going to do this right away. So if you're thinking, oh, I need to raise my rates. I do. I want to raise my rates so I make more money, but I'm scared to raise my rates. Make sure you tune into both of these and you could binge listen on a weekend. It's funny, but I just went for a really long hike yesterday and did the same thing myself. You know, I will tune into a favorite podcast where I know every one of them is going to give me juicy tips and sometimes re-listen to ones that my mind was preoccupied the first time I listened and get those tips really nailed down while I'm out in nature. So if the same appeals to you, I highly recommend listen to both of these. It'll be your one-two punch. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Fitness Marketing Mastery. By the way, we're in the re remodeling stages of this podcast. Really want to retitle it and I'm going to ask for your help in an upcoming episode. In fact, I'm going to put the link to help me rename retitle in this episode as well. But here is where I share marketing and sales strategies, occasionally share some of the practical about how specifically to reach women in midlife. And then once you've got them, how to really train them and use the science behind the training that is so unique for women in menopause to actually propel you forward with your marketing. Because if we do it authentically, transparently, your programming becomes your marketing because it is different and distinct and flat out works. Okay. (laughs) So here in this episode is another example of how to make this easy, enjoyable, even fun when raising your rates sometimes can be a little uncomfortable. So if anything's coming up for you, tune in. In this episode, one, when to raise your rates. You're attracting so many clients that you can't service them all and you have a wait list. Are you kidding me? First of all, we don't want people waiting. So you need to figure out how to hire other coaches who do what you do. Use your system, use your method, use your protocol and train them if you're doing so well. So you have a business within a business. Actually, that's one option. But when you are attracting so many clients, you can't service them all. You have a wait list of people who want to work with you. That's a big sign. You're in demand. You want to raise your rates. I've had friends, and this is in the functional health and medicine space. So a lot of people who are in my mastermind are functional health practitioners. They are doctors, naturopaths. They've doubled the rates, not once, not twice, but like three and four times and still end up having a wait list. So I know it's a little scary and maybe double your rate is probably, you know, a little bit of a stretch right now, depending on how you're delivering your programs, but raising your rates can actually change the way you train dramatically. That's one. Number two, when is it a good time to raise your rates? You're not attracting any clients. Because listen, your rate, if you're giving it away, says a lot about the quality and value to people. You may not be able to attract the people who really will do the work, will pay you and listen to you (laughs) and carry out what it is you're telling them they need to do in the, what is it, you know, 165 hours a week when you're not with them. Number three. You're attracting clients who don't do the work, are full of excuses, and cancel frequently to ask to reschedule so very often. So that's it. The three times that, and there are probably others, right? But it's not 
oh, I haven't raised my rates in a while. It's time to raise my rates. You know, there may be times when that could be true, but I don't think that's a good rule of thumb. You've got to look at what you're doing. Number one, are you on either one of the extremes? You're attracting so many people. You've got a long wait list. You can't possibly service them all. That is either time to raise your rates or time to raise your rates enough so that you can afford to hire coaches for a lower rate, train them on your protocol method, practice, And then you've got additional revenue streams in addition to being able to service those people or you raise your rates, you refer out to other people who can handle that long line, but you're immediately going to reduce that line if you increase the rates, maybe, (laughs) right? If you're not attracting any clients, what you're saying is you're probably not very good if your rate is too low. That's what people who are used to paying more for services and products associate like, yeah, you know, it's kind of the lower end of the market. It's probably not all that good. And then you're attracting clients who are the wrong clients for you. So you've got to take a good look at what your model is. So let's talk about the residual effects of the pandemic though, and why you might be saying, ah, you know, I'm just trying to build my business. Maybe, maybe you went online for the very first time and it's still a little bit of a struggle to make yourself distinct and unique because there's hundreds of thousands of people also in fitness, business, health coaching who went online. So you better be different. You better have a very unique spin and be willing to pay some money for marketing. And if you're not, you know, potentially you're going to suffer, but you've got to have great content. But what about the pandemic? You know, a lot of good and smart trainers left the building during and in the aftermath of the pandemic. I mean that in two ways. Many who were fed clients by a gym maybe found they didn't get fed anymore because members weren't coming in. And those trainers or health coaches may have quit or been forced to find their own work. You could be one of them. Other trainers left their common senses behind. (laughs) All right. I hope this isn't you, but they thought their knowledge, their service, their transformation that they offered wasn't as valuable online through Zoom as if clients came in to see them physically. Really? I mean, really, but that happened. If you help someone get in shape, lose weight, sleep better, does it matter how you deliver that to them? I've talked to clients by phone or by Skype from Italy, Trinidad, and Okinawa for a decade. That's who my clients were. I didn't charge any less for it. They found me because I charged more. And then there's trainers who felt suddenly that they'd been doing the exercise with their clients for it to matter, that they had to do that if they were suddenly delivering on Zoom because they felt awkward otherwise, just being there and watching clients work out. If you worked with a client one-on-one or in a group training program, you wouldn't do the workout with them. I mean, that becomes group fitness, right? Which is free. And so come back to your senses, be a good teacher, a good leader, and a good coach. And, you know, we're no longer in the 80s where we thought exercising for, you know, four hours a day was a good idea. We now know (laughs) the less you do, the better you're going to feel. If you're scared to raise your rates, the thought that you raise your rates when the economy may be down and clients aren't coming to you the way they used to be, that can be scary. If it doesn't scare you a little, though, it's probably not something that you want to bother even doing. More on that in the next episode when we talk about how much should you raise your rates to make it really matter and count. I've got a a good story for you, several of them, about my raising rates for one-on-one coaching and for programs and for memberships. And I'll share that. I'll share some of my stories in this next episode about how uh, my coaching clients and women fitness professionals in our mastermind looked at raising their rates. You know, and how we we doubled it and they're still really not where they should be to say, look, 
this is the value and the transformation that I provide you with and I'm worth it. And, you know, that is two things. You've got to look, yes, at, you know, what is kind of commensurate with what other coaches elsewhere are doing. And there's such a wide range. I came across somebody who um, actually stole some of my content on Instagram and I looked at what she was doing and I'm like, she's calling herself a health coach, but I don't know where she got her training because she's charging about $15 an hour for health coaching. And I'm thinking, oh my God, girlfriend. I mean, first of all, you've got to get some integrity. We don't steal other people's content and then literally call it your own. And if you're in your fifties and I need to be telling you there's something's wrong, but also, I mean, you've got to realize the value of coaching. Are you really transforming a life or are you just holding a warm hand and that's it? I mean, do what you do, make it valuable, stand up for it and charge for it. And that's really one of the biggest messages that that I'm going to give you here. And next week, I'm going to talk about how. But if you have a story about raising your rates and you want to share it, drop it below the show notes and that'll be at fitnessmarketingmastery forward slash raise your rates for show notes today. I'm also going to put in the notes uh, a link to the marketing to women, the copywriting course. You got to know there are five that I nailed five different buying personas of women. So that means, I mean, across the board, it's not like when we're 20, we think about these decisions and 50, we think about different ones. No, 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 no. At any age and any stage in their lives, there are, you know, five different 55 year old women, all in menopause. And let's say they hit menopause at the same exact time. They're not motivated by the same thing in order to do their exercise. So think about that deeply. Some people like to exercise because they actually love it. They love working hard. Some people exercise because they know they need it because it's going to help them stay off of medication or reduce their medication. And their doctor says they need to do it and they know it's healthy for them and they will do that because of them. Others absolutely you know, don't necessarily um, feel drawn to it for physical changes. They do it for mental health. And then others still are exercising. Yes, because they want better arms, thinner thighs. They want their belly fat to go away. But all those are motivations and that's not even all of them. So I haven't given you personas. What I've given you is just scenarios. If you dive in with me to the personalities. Now you start to see why words on your page, your website may actually be alienating the very people you want to attract or just missing. They're missing. You're missing words from your pages or your posts that would actually be like ba 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 pixie dust. And to your ideal client, those words are music. Like when you hear the thing that they say, I, I felt like you were talking to me. I feel like you were like whispering in my ear. Then you know you have the right words. And if you are not hearing that statement, those kinds of statements from anyone, they're not reaching out to you in DMs and your Instagram saying just that. They're not emailing you at your contact on your website saying just that. Then you got to wonder uh oh, do I have a little room for getting what I do out that I'm sure, girlfriend, is very valuable, but in words that really resonate with the ideal customers that I'm trying to attract. So lots of lots of last minute thoughts for you in this podcast episode, but I really want you to think about raising your rates, looking at is it time? Has it been a while? Because right now, you know, we're about two a little over two years as I do this live from the podcast or <laughs> pandemic, the P, P words, podcast pandemic, whatever, right? But a lot of us during the pandemic certainly weren't going to raise our rates, right? We were scared we were going to survive. So start looking at, is it time to raise your rates? And, you know, how can you do that in a way that feels in integrity? And I'm going to tell you some tips for not just how to do it, like how long 
ahead of time, you let people know you're going to do it, how you do it, do you do it for all of them or some of them, how you can make it feel good for them. Yeah. So they want to pay you more. (laughs) And we'll put a link to some other episodes that you will enjoy below the show notes too, but I'm going to keep you busy listening. So we've got some uh, more coming up about how to raise your rates literally. And don't miss that one because if you really know, I'm in this moment where I need to raise my rates. First of all, maybe you're not covering your bills. Maybe you're not attracting the right people or you're attracting way too many people. Then it's time. It's time for you to step up. You got this. All right. Leave your comments below the show notes, if you will, and leave questions if you've got them. Fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash raise your rates. 